I'm Matt with Mobile Solar Consulting, and today we're gonna be comparing two of the most popular DC to DC chargers on the market. We've got here our Orion XS and the Sterling BB1270. So the primary purpose of a DC-DC charger is to pull excess energy from your vehicle's alternator and use that to charge your lithium house bank. So let's just start with the basic specs. This is a 50 amp charger, 12 volt input and 12 volt output only. So right now this only works if you have a 12 volt vehicle and a 12 volt house battery as well. Victron does say they're coming out with a 24 volt version next year. The Sterling is a 70 amp charger with a 12 volt input, 12 volt output, but they also have models as low as 40 amps of charge, all the way up to 200 amps of charge, and they have models that work for 12, 24, and 48 volt house batteries. So they pretty much have a model for every application. Now let's talk about size. We've got obviously a smaller profile in the Orion. It's five and a half inches by about five inches. And we've got nine inches by about five and a quarter, five inches on the Sterling. Now this is again, a 70 amp charger versus a 50 amp charger. So obviously a slightly bigger profile here. Let's also compare Sterling's 120 amp model and we've got 10 and a half inches by still five inches. It's a bit taller as well at three inches tall. Now let's get into the nitty gritty here. The Orion XS does nothing to help your starter battery. That's my biggest complaint about it is it is a one directional charger only. It only takes energy from your alternator and sends it to the house battery. It never maintains or assists with jump starting. This, on the other hand, does have a bi-directional charger. So when you have excess solar and your house batteries are full, it will pass along some of that excess energy to trickle charge and maintain the starter battery. Also, if you need a jump start, you could just press this button four times and it's gonna start charging the starter battery as well at any time. Both have a simple setup process. So programming the setting into the Orion XS for your battery type or the amount of charge current you wanna use is very easy. You'll do that through the Victron Connect app on your phone, it takes about 60 seconds. The Sterling just has this one button, so you'll easily program the battery type by holding it down for seven seconds and then selecting your battery type. Um, if you need to reduce the charge current that the Sterling is sending to your house batteries, you can do that with the remote control. It's a very simple process, but no Bluetooth, no monitoring app for the Sterling. So you might be wondering, why would I ever need to reduce the charge current? One reason would be if you've got an undersized alternator, the alternator can't keep up with the charger. The other would be if you've run a wire from the starter to the house battery that's too small. If it simply can't carry all 70 or all 50 amps of charge current, then you might wanna reduce that charge current in the settings. Speaking of undersized wires, let's talk about the terminals on these units. The Orion XS can accept up to a four gauge wire, while the Sterling can only accept a six gauge wire. I think both of these have room to grow. Um, a four gauge wire is gonna work for most cases, small RVs, camper vans, no problem. A six gauge wire is gonna work for camper vans, no problem. But in the case of larger RVs and trailers where you're connecting a long wire from the truck's starter battery all the way back to an Anderson connector and then to the trailer, that's like a 50 foot run, sometimes even more. So neither of those would be adequate in that case. And you usually want to use two gauge for that type of application. Now, it's totally okay to use that two gauge. You will have to though take the extra step, terminate it and land it on a bus bar prior to the input terminals of the units. As far as operation goes, these are both 
fully automatic, meaning that they're gonna sense the voltage coming from your starter battery or alternator. And when that rises, it knows the vehicle's running and it begins charging the house battery. When that voltage falls, it knows that the vehicle has stopped running and it stops charging. So in that sense, they're both automatic, but they can accept an ignition signal if that's needed for some reason. So that would be at the bottom in here on the Sterling, the bottom in here on the Orion. Three reasons you might wanna run an ignition signal are, for example, if you've got an extremely long wire run with an undersized wire, what's gonna happen there, the unit's gonna see the vehicle start and the voltage rise. It's gonna begin charging and immediately see a voltage drop and then turn off. So the ignition signal can mitigate that issue. An ignition signal can also help when you've got a older alternator that maybe doesn't put out a full 14 plus volts. Maybe it's stuck at around 13.3 or 13.5 volts. The ignition signal can help there because otherwise the units are gonna have a hard time noticing when the alternator is even running or not. And lastly, if you've got Victron's smart lithium batteries and you're trying to use the Sterling, you will need an ignition signal and an allow to charge signal to activate the Sterling so that it's not running all the time. Um, and both of those signals would be accepted and handled by the Victron Solid Switch 104. So if it's not clear how that works, reach out to us and we'll definitely help you out. These also both do an exceptional job of matching your alternator's output. So for example, the older iterations of Victron's Orion units would simply turn on and charge at 30 amps or turn off and not charge at all. There was no in-between that happened if the unit started to sense that the alternator was maybe struggling to keep up with the charge that did not exist. But now in these units, both of them do a great job of seeing when the alternator is struggling to provide the full output of 50 or 70 amps and kind of dialing it back a bit to reduce that charge current to not overload the alternator, but not shut off entirely. So thumbs up for both of them there. The next point being efficiency and heat. So both of the units claim to be up to 98% efficient. However, what I'll tell you is that the Orion XS gets very, very warm to the touch. It's not a fire hazard, but it is very warm. Even though it's much cooler than the previous Orion models, it is still hot. The Sterling has a built-in fan at the top of every unit, so they definitely stay cool. Um, never even beyond slightly warm to the touch. I would say maybe this is reaching 100 degrees and maybe around 140. I'm sure there's videos detailing the temperature you know, more thoroughly, but from my experience, this unit stays very cool and this one very hot. If you're looking to pick up a DC-DC charger, Check the links in the description, or if you're looking for a discounted scratch and dent model, definitely uh, give us a call so we can see what we got in stock.